Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video I think might be my number one requested video from you guys and that is a barn tour. So today I'm going to give you guys a tour of the property. This is not um, my place, I don't own it or anything like that, but I am lucky enough to be able to keep Fletch here. So let's get this tour started um, and of course if you guys want to see more of myself and Fletch you can also follow us on Instagram at hand.equestrian. All right, guys, so this is Fletcher's paddock and he's coming up to suss out if we brought any food with us. Um, he doesn't get stabled or anything like that, so this is where he spends like 99% of his time when he's not out being ridden. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have any dinner for you yet. Um, and this is Fletcher's paddock mate, or not paddock mate, but this is his neighbor. Fletcher's kind of a funny one. He doesn't really need like actual paddock mates. He prefers just to have like a few neighbors or a couple of horses close by, but he prefers to sort of have his own space. Uh, and this paddock's really perfect for him because it's so big. He has heaps of room to run around. On his gate, I always leave like a halter and lead rope just in case someone needs to catch him quickly. This is why I can't keep my rugs on the gate because Fletch literally tries to eat everything. Excuse you, Fletch. Oh, anyways, hey, <laughs> don't ruin your fly mask. Let go. So yes, that is his fly mask and also his windsucking collar. So at the moment he's not actually wearing it. I really only have to put it on him when he's had a bit of time off. He seems to start picking it up again for some reason. I think he just gets like a little bit bored in his paddock and that's when it starts up again. So at the moment I've got him in full work so he hasn't been wearing it at all and he's been really well behaved. Um, and then like I was saying, because he always bites things, I actually keep his rug over here on the arena. Uh, so this is the one he's wearing at the moment, which is just like a really light, kind of spring rug it doesn't have any filling to it or anything like that because um, it's not really cold enough here yet that we're putting anything too fleecy on them but yeah that's why it's over here and not on his gate because otherwise he just pulls it off and tries to eat it so this is the actual stable area we've got two stables behind me and obviously the tie up area you guys sort of know if you've watched my other videos that this little spot here is where I always tie up Fletch um, with his little hay bag and we are so so lucky to have this undercover area to be able to tie the horses up in. Even today the weather is disgusting, it's about to pour rain so I'm so happy that I'm able to like bring Fletch under here and just not have to stress about that. So behind me are the actual stables. I honestly don't ever really use these. Um, I'm not the biggest fan in the world of stabling horses if you can avoid it. Obviously there are situations where you need to, whether it's for weather or competing or whatever the reason is, and I totally get that and I don't look down on people who do stable their horses, but me personally, um, especially when you've got a thoroughbred off the track, prefer not to put them back in that environment. Because he is a little bit frazzled in his brain, he doesn't do the best when he's stabled or in like confines and yards. He's fine, but I can tell that he's much happier when he's out in his paddock. So that's what I tend to just do is like let him just be in a big paddock all the time. So then right next to the stable area and right behind Fletch, what you guys can see is the yards that we have. So essentially the one in front of you guys with the shelter in it is almost like a mini paddock, like it has its own automatic water and it's really good because they can still see the other horses, so they stay pretty relaxed up here. And these little yards are pretty set up. They've got their own little automatic water troughs in the corner. Um, they're all electrified, proper fencing. So it's like so good to be able to have these. There isn't really a feed room per se. Basically, it's kind of just scattered around in the sheds. We just use these rubber buckets, which we fill up with the feeds, and then we take to the paddocks and empty into the rubber bowls. So the horses don't actually eat out of these. Um, we just use them to mix up the feeds. I am very lucky to have access to these feed storage containers. Um, they're designed in a way that like no mice or anything like that can get inside. And so we've got our chaff and all the pellets sitting in all of these. So because we have multiple horses on the property, we needed more food storage. So I've also got these two black barrels filled with chaff uh, for Fletch. And then lastly, we essentially have like a hay storage area as well. So. This is um, for the other horses and this little pile here that I need to restock is Fletcher's hay. Um, it's like a rye mix that I've been feeding him lately and he seems to really like it and it seems to be keeping his weight on very nicely as well. And this is possibly like my most love thing on the whole <laughs> property and that is a washing machine just for our horse stuff. It is honestly the biggest lifesaver ever. As you can tell it's had a really, a really tough life. <laughs> So basically this is our pile of what we still need to wash. 
Um, and then this is just on like high rotation constantly, but this is honestly like life saving. All right, so I kind of don't even know where to start because there's a lot to kind of walk through here. But this is essentially like room one of our tech room. Um, basically, all you need to know is like this wall is like all rugs, like all of these containers, that's all they've got in there. It's just random cottons and whatever else. And then the rest of the shelving here is sort of like, I guess you call it like our first aid. So it has kind of like all the lotions and potions and like, Iodine and like a vet box um, for the horses, all kind of random stuff. So then I also have my old clothing stand, which is sort of just, I'm gonna use this as like a saddle blanket hanger and get some like hooks so I can put some more on. But at the moment it's just holding like whatever saddle blanket I used last ride, just so that it has a chance to actually dry out. So this shelf has like a lot of my stuff on it. Um, so I've got like my float boots sitting in here as well as um, like an old spare saddle blanket. Um, this is more first aid stuff, so this is more so like my elastic wraps and stuff like that and my sprays and whatnot that might spill or leak. Um, this is just empty at the moment. And then of course we have like the really disgusting horse towels, we've got a big collection of those. So then I've also got my grooming box on here as well. Um, and then this container which has kind of just got like all of my additives that I put in Fletcher's feeds. So like that's his salts that he gets every day. Um, I've got like my washing detergent um, and like all my leather cleaning and all my leather cleaning products. So this is the main tack room. Um, like I said, I honestly don't even know where to start, so I might try and show you guys wall by wall exactly what we've got going on in here. So this is the saddle wall. The way I sort of got it organized is like, this is my jumping gear um, in this spot. So I've got my Bates Momentum jumping saddle, and then I kind of tend to put like the saddle blankets that I use the most often for jumping just above it. Um, so they just sit up there and then the girths I just keep um, on top of whatever saddle they go back with. So I've got two different sizes for Fletch. One is when he's a bit thinner and trimmer and one is a bit longer for when he puts on a little bit of weight. So at the moment we're using the longer one because he has got a bit of a paddock body after having some time off. And this is just my sheepskin girth cover, which I'm not really using at the moment, but once I clip Fletch then I will be because he does get a little bit sensitive on his little tongue. So then on the next rung, I've got all of my dressage gear. So this has got my Bates Anova dressage saddle sitting here and I always keep this on like a low hook because it's really heavy, this saddle. Um, so it's like impossible if it sits up too high, it literally hurts my back to pull it down. Um, and then I've got my keeper half pad sitting underneath that. Um, same with the jumping, I keep all my girths over the top of um, whatever saddle they go back to. So his dressage girth is sitting over the top of that. And similar to how I've got the jumping set up, I keep my most used uh, saddle pads for dressage and flat work just sitting above my saddle. So because I'm so addicted to buying saddle pads, I also have a third <laughs> rung um, next to my dressage pads, which is literally just even more saddle pads. Some of you guys might know that we have another horse called Belle, so she unfortunately injured herself quite a few years ago now, so she's not able to be ridden. Um, but when we were riding her, this Wintech jumping saddle was what we were using. And I actually can't bring myself to sell this saddle because it's actually really nice and I keep thinking in my mind that maybe one day I'll get another horse and then at least I have another saddle to fit to set all. So that basically just sits there in storage. So underneath my spare saddle blankets, I have another spare saddle. So this one's actually my old all-purpose trainer saddle that I was using on my quarter horse cross when I was still at Pony Club. So unfortunately it fitted my quarter horse perfectly but it was very unique shape so I haven't been able to sell it on but eventually I think I'll just try and get it reflocked and sell it on to someone. Underneath that I do keep my long boots that I use every single day and this is basically where I keep all of my everyday riding gear. Um, so I've got my two Dublin helmets in here, I've got the black edition in navy which is one of my favourite helmets and of course the Orista in the matte black which also in love. Just my riding gloves tend to sit in here as well because then they don't get lost. Um, and then I've got my Haymag gaiters as well, which honestly I never use. I wish I'd never bought these. And then the only other thing I've got in here too is Fletcher's stud guard. I tend to just leave it in here because otherwise it's a little bit too easy to get lost. Underneath my actual saddles, I've got kind of like, I guess like my boot station. So I've got this random little thing. I think it's part of like a game set or something. I actually don't know what it is, but it's like the best thing ever. So I use it as like a drying rack for my boots. So I bought this case at Kmart. It was really cheap. I think it was like $10 or something. Um, and it's basically like, I don't know what you would call it. It's kind of like a cross between a bag and like a carrier kind of thing. Um, and it comes with these inserts in the top. 
the act is like a little divider so I thought it would be perfect for all of my boots so to keep them kind of separated and somewhat organized so at the back I've got my PEI cross-country boots which are looking a little rough <laughs> so they sit at the back there and then I've also got my old um, 10 minute box so these are my old 10 minute box cross-country boots um, I do like these the only problem with them is they're very very heavy I generally just use these for like light training or fitness work at home now so the cross-country boots basically sit towards the back because they're the ones I reach for the least because obviously we haven't sort of been out on cross-country um, and just on top of them I've also got Fletcher's little Roma Bell boots so they just sit at the back there as well so then I try to be organized so I've got my show jumping boots in this side which like match up to the jumping saddles being on that side and then under my dressage saddle I've got these two spots for my flat work and dressage boots. So Fletcher has two pairs of flat work boots, these are our other spares. So basically I use these boots when those ones are in the wash and vice versa. Um, but really want to save up for another pair of the PEI Airtex. I am in love with those, they keep Fletcher's legs a lot, lot cooler than these ones do and I just think that's very beneficial in the long run. So obviously there's a gap in that front corner which is where these boots go into once they're dried out. So then on the show jumping side, I've got more 10 minute box basic training boots. So these are more like spares. I only use them sort of at home, not so much out and about. And then I've also got my Waldhausen in blue. Um, these are like the plastic mold ones, so they're proper. They're the, usually the ones that I compete in. And then I've also got the Waldhausen in the brown, which I bought when I was in Europe. And these are like my absolute favorites now. So I think once I start competing again, I'll probably switch into these ones because I'm a little obsessed with the brown coloring. And then of course I've got the matching Fetlock boots to both those sets as well. So that all sits in there. So this is kind of like a hanging wall. So I've tried to keep all of my nice stuff in bags or long here to keep them out of the dust. I always, always keep these little bags. So these are like the ones you get when you buy um, like a rug from Weatherbeater or a saddle blanket. Always keep them, they're so handy. So basically along this wall, I keep my ear bonnets for Fletch. So I've got them in that one. I've got this extra large bag, which generally houses like my competition saddle pads, but they're in the wash at the moment. Um, so I've got one of my new Lemieux pads just sitting in here because I haven't used it yet. Right at the end we have our breastplates. So this one is Fletcher's everyday breastplate in warm blood size and this is Belle's old one um, in a black in a full size. So if you do buy a flexible fit breastplate just double check the sizing because Fletch is a big horse but he's actually not warm blood sized. But this is the one that fit him and the full doesn't come like anywhere close to fitting him. Underneath the hooks we've got these two big trunks so we basically keep all of our like heavy rugs, waterproof rugs, canvas rugs all sit in here. So right at the end here is just a little cupboard and this basically houses all of like my shampoos, conditioners, like uh, spray detanglers, cool foils, all that kind of stuff. This is our absolute wall of plastic tubs. Just so you guys know this is 100% not all of my stuff I swear. So basically like this rung here is essentially Fletcher's stuff. So I do try my best to be organized. I've got them labeled so we've got like Fletcher's cottons, Fletcher's fleeces and show rugs but like it doesn't always like match back to what's actually inside the container. Generally like once I start competing again, it just like all goes out the window because I'm just like rushing to get everything away rather than trying to like actually organize it. So once every few months I try and go back through and just make sure that everything is sitting where it should be. So this is essentially where we keep all of the bridles. It's pretty much all my stuff from like here onwards. I know it looks like a lot of stuff for like one horse but I've kind of just like collected it over a long period of time. So very quickly I do keep all of my lunging gear up here. I've got my lunge line, I've got side reins, also got a bungee cord which I honestly don't really use for Fletch um, but some horses definitely prefer to be lunged in this rather than the side reins. Um, and then as well I've got Bell's old bridles sitting up there just in case we need something spare. Again I've tried to organize it as sort of dressage bridles and jumping. This first bridle is Fletcher's everyday one which is the black Michelin bridle. So that sits there and then I've just got some spare pieces underneath. The next bridle is my collegiate anatomical. So this one I've been using for show jumping. I haven't used it on cross country yet but will be in the future. And then I've also got my old cross country bridle which is <laughs> kind of a mix. It is a horse on base with flexible fit nose band and brow band and rein. So it's a little bit of a mixed bridle um, that I was using before I got the collegiate. So once again, just hanging on to this because I may want to go back to this one or because I get another horse or I just need spare bridle parts. And then right at the end, I basically have like a spare parts bag, got a spare pair of reins, which I usually take with me when I go competing just in case. 
Um, and then I've kept these flexible fit bags and inside them I've got accessories. So in the first bag I've got actually a pretty much new uh, flexible fit grackle noseband which I bought for Fletch but it didn't really suit him in the end so I'm just keeping that for now. Um, and then the other one I've got our fancy competing brow band so that lives in there for dressage. Um, and all of my Miklum bridal uh, accessories. So basically like that's how I try and like organize all of my stuff and keep it pretty clean so that they live in there. So just while we cool down, this is the arena. Um, I'll show you guys a close up of the surface. It's kind of like sand rubber mix. It's very popular now, um, but I really, really like it. It's really nice to ride on and it stays nice no matter what the weather is. So then this here is actually where we keep all of our show jumping bits and pieces. So this is so, so handy to have. So we can just store them all up on this ledge. What are you doing up there? I, I don't know, he's seen something in the distance. <laughs> Pain cards. This is like my therapy. So one of the videos I have got in the pipeline is going to be a Q&A. So if you haven't already, jump on Instagram and you can just send me any questions you have there. Um, and I will attempt to answer them all in a video which is coming up very shortly. I'll be dreaming. I'll be dreaming. I'll be dreaming. I'm a dreamer. 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 I